Welcome to Bible study with Fred. I'm in Proverbs chapter 17, starting at verse 4. A wicked doer giveth heed to false lips, and a liar giveth ear to a naughty tongue. Now sadly, and this is so true among Christians, but a gossip loves to hear gossip, and a liar is open to hearing lies. Chances are, if you'll listen to tales told about anyone's failures or failings with glee, then you are also a spreader of those tales. If you like to hear lies, vulgar jokes, and nasty talk, then your mouth is probably full of garbage on a regular basis too. This clearly has some basis in these admonitions for us in the New Testament doctrines for the church today. Ephesians 5, 4. Neither foolishness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Early Christian leaders would say it was wrong for you to watch as entertainment things which you're forbidden to do. Like TV and movies today, they were warning about attending the theater where evil, like fornication and adultery, were made to enjoy as spectators. The idea behind this proverb is that you like to hear or see evil, then you probably like to do it as well. Judge yourself. Do you enjoy gossip? Do you find yourself laughing at vulgar, demeaning jokes? Do you honestly think that because you don't think you initiate them, that you aren't really a part of it? To spread gossip or filthy communications requires a speaker and a hearer, both of whom are equally guilty. Ephesians 4.29 Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Now let's go to verse 5 of Proverbs 17. Whoso mocketh the poor approacheth his maker, and he that is glad at calamity shall not be unpunished. Proverbs 14.31 He that oppresseth the poor reproacheth his maker, but he that honoreth him hath mercy on the poor. It is clear that God has a definite position on those who would mock or oppress the poor. Now, you can be poor for many reasons, some of which might be your own bad choices or sloth, but it isn't the Christian's place to determine how, from a person's history, they got poor, but to not mock them. If you make fun of people less well-off than you, you, than you are, or who are habitually suffering at the bottom of the pile, then you reproach God himself. On a side note, when the Bible connects like things with the word and, uh, so that with a list of, 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 of like things like might be shown together as synonyms, this is not always true, but you can see by the context what is linked. Many times a difficult word is linked with an easier word. Notice the synonym for reproach here in Psalms, Psalm 22, 6. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men, despised of the people. To reproach your creator, your maker, is to despise him, to hold him in low regard. If you find yourself mocking the poor, watching television and saying, good, those stupid people deserve what's happening to them. It can hardly be said that you're behaving in a manner that glorifies God. You might find that you heart you yourself may lose some of the means of living if you approach God by mocking the poor and being glad at their calamities. Now, verse 6. Children's children are the crown of old men and the glory of children are their fathers. Grandchildren, as any grandparent knows, are a delight if they're being raised in the Lord. And in every child who has a godly and loving father knows that they feel a special love toward them. For those of us whose fathers are no longer with us, there are possibly people in our lives who have filled the gap our fathers have left. Older Christian men we can trust and admire. For the older men, try not to be so carnal that only love you can give is for grandchildren who contain your DNA. You'll only see in heaven your spiritual children and grandchildren, so spread your affections around, first to your own and then to others. There are young people who need an older role model, male role model, who will exemplify Christ to them. There are young people who long for the affection of a dad, the approval and the love. Be there as you are able and don't put up a wall because the child isn't of your flesh. I have many grandchildren who call me Pappy, who don't know of me just as the guy who married their grandmother only, but as their very own Pappy. I used to love it when I would go to uh, my son Micah's house and his little Leah would run over to me and or when a Annie Andrea's Katie would give me a big hug. I don't, for propriety's sake, and considering the age we live in, seek out their physical affection, but if they want a hug, they'll sure get one. But there are older boys and girls who, while not in my legal family, I regard with nearly the same affection that I do my very own. Young people in my church family, for instance. I would help them whatever is in my power or that is right to do so. I would hope that in the bounds of what is good and right, that every man in a church would feel the same way toward the young people of the church. Not to intrude or interfere or to make uncomfortable, but to simply let the young people in the church know that you love them and hold them in high regard. I, for one, remember how the approval of older people and their affection was important to me as I was growing up, and it doesn't end at 18. That's not a magic age. 
our need for approval and affectionate feelings from older people goes on through our youth, throughout our youth. So I'm going to stop there and I'm going to pick it up in verse 7 next. I'm asking you to read your Bible, study your Bible, cross-reference the verses, pray to God for wisdom and understanding, and then share your interpretation with someone else. Open the Bible today. Let God speak to you through his words. Um, you can purchase my comments on Amazon, Kindle, or in, on Kindle or paperback. You can uh, follow me on Blogger. Um, or if you watch the video this far, you click, well, please click like and subscribe or follow. And uh, I thank you.